Earl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization of the East Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Thank you, man. You heard it there from Harden. How'd we get here, though? Basically, just follow the money. Harden could have been a free agent this summer. He decided to opt in with the Sixers for this season and make $35.6 million. The two sides were going to work to find a trade partner, but now things might get a little messier since the Beard will not be an unrestricted free agent until after the season, and he can't sign an extension with the 76ers or any other team. So now we have our NBA expert, Brad Botkin, joining us now here in studio. And Brad, so much to get into with this James Harden situation. I think first it was a shock to see that video come out this morning yeah. of him saying that to the crowd there in China. But, but first, when you look at it, you have a situation of Harden who on multiple occasions has forced his way out yep. and leaving a team. Yep. You have a GM in Daryl Morey who's kind of dug his feet in the sand and said, no, I'm not making a trade when you look at what happened with Ben Simmons. Yep. In this situation of... Maury versus James, who do you think wins out? It, de it depends how you define win. You laid it out well right there. But first, let's take a moment of silence for James Harden's financial struggles. He's made over $300 million <laughs> in his career. He took $33 million last year on a pay cut so they could sign P.J. Tucker and round out their roster. And he thinks that he now deserves the big long-term deal for that sacrifice. Opted in to the 35.6 million this year. And now he says, I'm not gonna play. I wasn't paid enough. Daryl Morey didn't keep his word, but this is the deal. James Harden is trying to hold Daryl Morey to a handshake agreement that somewhere along the way in the off season, he said to him, I'm gonna take care of you because you took this pay cut last year. And he didn't give it to him, didn't give him the long-term deal. Did James Harden earn it? When the Sixers had Boston down 3-2 with a chance to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, in games six and seven, James Harden shot 25% from the field, scored 21 combined points. In game seven, nine points. Three of 11 from the field made three baskets in game seven. Now he thinks that he's worth all this money. He's not worth it. If he was worth it, he would have been able to drop that player option go out on the market as a free agent and get his money. But he's not worth it. So now he thinks he can come back and take the player option and still go get his money somewhere else with the team he wants to play for in the Clippers. Only the Clippers don't have a package that Daryl Morey is going to take back. And he's right to do that. This is a business. When James Harden gave his word to the Houston Rockets, he signed the contract, said, I'm going to play for you. The implicit response there is, or the implicit agreement, is I'm going to give everything that I have for this contract that I signed. What did he do? He went on a hangover tour, showed up to camp half drunk, <laughs> and forced his way out of Houston, then forced his way out of Brooklyn. So as he kept his word right. everywhere along the way, this is hypocrite stuff from James Harden. I don't know ultimately who's going to win. Uh, again, it, it depends how you deem win, but Daryl Morey is doing the right thing to either get a player or a package of picks and young players that he can then flip into a player that can keep Joel Embiid and the Sixers on somewhat of a championship contending trajectory. He has to do that for his team, and James Harden expecting him to go out and trade him for a bogus package that's gonna hamstring the Sixers because he gave him his word last year after he scored nine points in game seven. Absolutely not. Daryl Morey's doing the right thing. And James, Car James Harden is, uh, is crying a river. James Harden took his shots. I think, Brad, you just took your shots for sure. Um, when you look at the Sixers, of course, they want to win now because yep. of having Embiid. How much of an eye-opening situation might this be for James realizing, hey, my value on the market is not what I thought I, I would get? It better be eye-opening because here's the deal. There, listen, there's a clause in this new CBA. We might start calling this the James Harden clause. But it says, if you hold out past 30 days and the start of training camp is deemed as the start of the season per the CBA, if you hold out past 30 days, you don't get paid. And he could forfeit his right to become a free agent next summer. So what's going to happen? He is going to have to report to camp 
and he's going to have to play well because you just said it. He has to reestablish his value in the marketplace. He has to. He's on the last year of a deal. He's going to be 34 years old. His play is declining. If he wants one more bag and everybody is entitled to their priority, he has shown that his priority is to get paid the most that he can while playing for the team that he wants to play for. If he wants to have his cake and eat it too, he has got to perform better than he performed when it really counted for the Sixers. So I don't know what he's going to do. My guess would be that he's going to show up to camp somewhere around the 30th day so he doesn't pass that and stop getting paid. But he's probably going to have a cell phone in his pocket, a la Ben Simmons. He's going to be a problem. We have shown, he has shown that he's willing to take it to the maximum in these stare down contests. He did it with Houston. He got his way in Brooklyn, so why wouldn't he think it would work here? But Daryl Morey has also shown that he will hold firm in what he did for Ben Simmons, ironically, to bring James Harden in and wind up in the same position with him two years later. Uh, but if Harden is smart and he wants one more deal, he'll show up in shape and he'll play the best that he can play and he'll reestablish his value on the market. Yeah, you mentioned that showing up in shape, uh, going all around online is the Harden with yeah. the extra pounds yep. on him right yeah. now. We've seen Joel Embiid in the past not mince his words and not be afraid to say how he feels about his team and about his teammates. Now you have a new head coach in here with Nick Nurse. Yep. How does Coach Nurse navigate this situation? Let's say that if James does show up, and we do hear from Embiid one way or another, how does Nick navigate knowing that this is still a win now mode for the franchise? Yeah, you just you just hope that the guy's going to be a pro. I mean, we are they are prof we, we they, they are professionals here, and you have to have that expectation. There is not much Nick Nurse can do if James Harden shows up and refuses to play or refuses to play at 100% of his capacity. There really isn't much he can do, and so this is going to be about James Harden and whether he wants to honor his word or if he's going to keep going back on this. Daryl Morey told me this. I have a hard time believing that Daryl Morey went to him and said, "I." guarantee you you opt in here I'm gonna trade you to the Clippers he knew what the Clippers have to offer Terrence Mann a few picks and that's if the Clippers would give up Terrence Mann they don't have a package that's worthy of the Sixers staying in contention so I have a hard time believing he went to him and said hey take this opt-in take the player option I'll trade you as far as whatever he promised him last year I think we can all safely assume that he said hey James you know we'll take care of you on the back end but listen it's a business things change we all sign contracts that's the way that it works nothing is perfect everything's in the moment now it's a futures business Business, right the NBA looks ahead and he's just not worth it right now it is very difficult for the Sixers who are going to have an open cap sheet next year to start tying their books up again with a precipitously declining player who wants something close to a max deal so these things change it's fluid you have to understand that and for him to hold Daryl Morey to his word like this and say I'll never play for him it's just again it's it's hypocrisy at its finest because he didn't honor his word in Houston he bailed his way out of there. He bailed his way out of Brooklyn. He had contracts with those teams. He agreed to give them everything that he had, and he didn't do that. And now all of a sudden, everybody's supposed to have this, my word is oak bond with him. I, don't, I can't get behind that. I don't think many people can get behind that. I think he's going to have to show up to camp. He is going to lose his money if he doesn't after 30 days and try to reestablish his value. But I'll throw one caveat in there. The reason he didn't want to become a free agent and he wants to make this a trade, and the same thing could be true next year, is the team that he wants to go to doesn't have the money to sign him as a free agent. So he's trying to work this thing from all angles to end up where he wants with the money he wants. And his play at the moment does not warrant that kind of leverage. If you're Embiid, you're the MVP of the league right now, what do you make of this situation and what do you think goes forward for him and who runs point in all the situations to, to be able to facilitate for Embiid? It's his team. Yeah, give me Tyrese Maxey. I mean, the bottom line here is if we're talking about this from a basketball perspective, I can make the case that the Sixers could be better off without James Harden. I really can't. I mean, enough is enough. Fool me once, twice, three times. At a certain point, James Harden is not a guy that's going to get you over the top, particularly at this point in his career. Right? But this Joel Embiid, he remember he came out and said a while back a while back, I want to win a championship, whether that's with the Sixers or somebody else, I don't know. But he put it out there pretty plainly that we better get this right in Philadelphia or I'm gonna be looking to get out. So now we talked about this fluid situation. Things change, dynamics change. Well, that is a big change. Joel Embiid pretty much putting it on the record that I want to compete for a title. And if we don't compete for a title, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to put my own trade demand in. 
So now Daryl Morey has to look at this like ultimate urgency. If I don't get somebody back for James Harden that is the equivalent or better or picks or players that I can flip into a player for that, then I'm letting Joel Embiid down. And if I let Joel Embiid down, start doing the dominoes. Yeah. Philadelphia can fall apart real quick and James Harden would be at the epicenter of forcing that to happen. So this is his chip. Daryl Morey has to play it right and he's going to play it right as he should. The NBA always giving us popcorn, always Hey, we need something. it right now. We right. need it right now. Nothing going on in the NBA, a little drama, no problem. James Harden, thank you very much. He's our Brad Botkin yes, trying sir. to start off the saga with James Harden for what is going to happen for the beard. You see him, he's been productive most seasons with 20 or more points, 10 or more assists, and five or more rebounds in NBA history. Four of those for the beard, only behind Big O and Russell Westbrook, who he wants to team up with in LA with the Clippers. We'll have to wait and see what happens for James Harden, because right now we know he is not happy. And it doesn't sound like he wants to be a Philadelphia 76er for much longer.